Welcome to another video by Lame Creations, and we're going to show what some of the things you can do with regex inside your queries. I've been asked about this. This was a request, and so I'm going to uh, cover it. I'll do a couple videos on this. Uh, the best way I'm going to approach this one here is just get into it. This is a query that I've actually stripped out from one of my dashboards. It's a I have an app on documenting my uh, systems. If you guys have ever seen that app, I, if I remember, I'll put it down on the bottom. I have a documentation app, and it basically documents everything about your system automatically for you. And this is the page that does it. And we'll just break it down by its different parts. Basic concept here is I make it a REST call. And when I make the REST call, I'll make some additional information to that REST call. And ultimately, down here, you can see that I'm going to strip out uh, some fields and make some modification using the regex command. But we'll just walk you through what I'm doing first and uh, so that you have an idea of what this query is actually supposed to be doing and then it'll make more sense what the regex is doing hopefully. All right, when I run this command, this does queries my Splunk instance and it's going to pull back all my dashboards. So every dashboard that I have will show up here. If I do a head one on this and then do a transpose we'll see what one of those looks like it's all the information about your view who where the app is whether it's disabled who's the author the description uh, this is a very valuable field here you'll see EIA data this is actually the XML it literally pulls out every piece of the XML that's in your dashboard uh, and that's where we're going to be doing our regex, is we want to be able to pull information out of this XML content. There's other pieces, such as the ID, so this is the URL link. This is what is it's a type of a view. Um, what's, what's the title, updated version. Anyway, labels, things like that. All right, so we'll go back to my query. So that's all it is. It's just using REST API to pull the views directory from, and these dash dashes, that means uh, any any app owned by any user. I could actually write in the app and the user, but this is not a REST API uh, class. Uh, so we'll just move past that. Then I come in here and I'm just trying to, I take the next line here and all that's really doing is it's making sure that there's an app associated with it. Because you'll get a few views every now and then that don't have apps. I don't understand exactly. It's not really important. Don't worry about it. And definitely author of nobody um, we want to get rid of. So it's and it was just basically to make sure this was a way of controlling who the author was. I really don't need this. I'll, I'll keep it out from my query. Um, this lookup, again, not essential. I was just adding information about the MITRE techniques it covers and why you would build the dashboard. That the description itself when you build a dashboard isn't enough. And I don't need to fill the null on any of those, so I'll move on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the ID filled out. And so the concept is you're going to, there's an ID filled already. So let's go find ID. It's on the next page. We can see that, and what we want to pull out of it is we're going to call it URL field. It's just normal. I'm not here to teach you regex. You're going to, that'll be done in a different time. But it's saying field to so use rex, which is basically the shorthand. I'm going to use regex. And then what field do you want to apply to? I want to apply to this ID field. And then you put in double quotes your regex. Here are these little chicken beaks, carrots, whatever you want to call them. It says, I'm going to make me a field called URL field when I'm done. And I'm going to parse out according to my regex rules, which you can see it's based off of slashes and things like that. And we're going to come in here. And so right now, there is no URL field when I'm done. We'll just do it. We'll put that head one back on. We'll go back to transpose. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. We'll transpose after we're done. Again, magic, no URL filled. Would have been here because it's alphabetized. Jump to the next page. And now I have a URL filled. What did it strip off? The chick, this is basically saying go to the last. 
the find the last slash and take everything afterwards. So what did it do? It's now giving me the name of the URL field. That's important if I want to be able to pull it out and use it in other dashboards and links. So I pulled this URL field out. That's what that's for. Next command. I want to extract source, source type, event type, field values, and other things that are associated in there. I'm just going to go grab this regex. This one here is just grabbing source type. I did have one that does them all, but again, for keeping things simple, I'm not going to take the time to go through all those. So we got EAI data. If we look at EAI data, it's the entire XML. There are queries inside this dashboard. Oh, this one may not. Yep, I got base search, so I got queries. Maybe. It looks like this is just HTML here. So we're not going to be able to use the head one on this. We're going to want to pull back others. Yeah, so there is no URL, so we're going to take this head one off. We'll just grab some that do, though. And what I want to do then is I want to take this this off and just so you can see what's going on I'm gonna make sure I keep the ID field why not we'll keep URL filled we'll use EI, EAI data and then we follow this through and we're basically there's my I'm pulling out the source type and basically I'm looking for the word source type in all of that data and so we will grab source types here That's not a very good source type. Hold there. All right, so here we can see it found the source type LameCon. So it's my connection logs. And what it did is it went through this whole thing and found anything that was a search. Wow, that's impressive to find it. I'm already missing it. I think that's your query. Let's see, any query here? So there's a query somewhere in here, query. This one didn't have one, but nothing there, nothing there. All right, so there is source type equals source type. I'm guessing if I come over here, I'm going to find. It doesn't use that one because it wanted it to actually be spelled out. So it won't take the dollar signs. Next query. We'll get there. Not sure why I didn't find it very right off, but there we go. Here's a good query. So we scroll over, found it, source type correlate con, come down, and it grabs source type equals correlate con. So you can see these are really ma massive. I don't want to be going through all those trying to find my data. Basically, this whole panel is supposed to come back and give me information about my dashboards and what source types they're using, and we just write a nice complicated query here, regex, and it pulls it out, gives me a source type. Really big time saver there. Next query, this one here, we're going to actually pull out the query fields. All right. We've made it pretty, I think I've made it pretty obvious this EAI data is really big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of it. And it is queries. We're going to make a query field. We're looking for any time we see the word query, like I just searched. And we're going to pull out everything in between those chicken beaks of query. And if I run that, I can get all my Splunk queries that are being run on the dashboards. So we've now pulled an ID, 
we've got the URL name. We've pulled the queries out, and we can see that it found the Corelight Con, found the Corelight Con, found the Corelight Con, and I guess there's a DHCP down here, and there you go, there's DHCP. Really quick, pulls back all the queries, and we can see all the source types pulled to the side. Makes it really easy to know what's being run on your dashboards. You want to know if you're making a query, there's lots of reasons you might want to pull this. And so there we go. There's all my there's all my queries. The nice thing is you can see they're multi-value. So if you hover over them, this query is associated here, that's query is associated there. Anyway, that's another example of a regex. So again, Rex fill, point it to where you're going, write your stuff in between branches here. We do max max match concept of I only want to sh how many times will I allow matches to occur. I don't want it to just stop on the first one, so I can add a max match equals zero. There's a lot of regex stuff you can do, but don't. Again, this is not a regex class. This is a regex. How if you have the regex, go to regex 101, put your stuff in there, write your query, then you can copy and paste it in. And then these are there's some additional fields like this field point to the field you're using max match don't just make it max match each equals zero should mean that you can match as many times as you want you don't want it just to stop when it finds the first query all right next piece here there's double quotes and other stuff in there i want that so you sometimes you get it things written with a double quote, sometimes you get them written no quotes. People can write source type equals correlate con or source type equals quote, quote. So what if I want to remove them out? Oops. I just do this and basically I'm writing, I can do said. You can do your awk, your great. But anyway, said here, basically that's a replace. And you say, hey, uh, in the field source types that you've created, if you see a quote, which I don't typically write mine with quotes, but some people do, so you're not going to see this in live action, but this is your command to take off the double quotes uh, with said. Anyway, so that is regex in a nutshell, how you can implement it. Watch for my next video, I'll put the link down below, and that's going to show practical applications of making subnets and stuff like that off of using regex. Anyway, um, hope this gets your ideas of what you can do with regex, gets you to understand the general principle, and it helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you find this information important. If you really want to support the channel, I really encourage you to join and become a member. Member, I give membership perks. I give additional training. We have hours and hours of videos that are not available to the uh, uh, to the general anal to the general public here. We cover training on dashboards and system administration and writing good queries and things like that. Things that you would buy on Udemy or other courses, but we, we have them there for the members. It's a great way of helping su help support this channel and help it grow. Anyway, hope you've been enjoying this and keep coming back.